Have you ever wondered, what's the difference between a 458 SOCOM and a 4570 on mild steel? Well, you came to the right place, because in today's video we're going to try and figure it out. In case you missed the last testing video, this is Steel Sled 4.0 right here, and it's basically Steel Sled 3.0 plus a clamp and plus these taller legs right here. Let me tell you something, this thing is absolutely awesome. It worked like a charm in the last video, and unless something breaks, I should never have to make another Steel Sled. Speaking of breaking, I may have spoken too soon because it looks like a crack is starting to form on the back part of this clamp right here, but that shouldn't be an issue because as long as this clamp can clamp down on this face right here, we should be good to go. I'll be honest, that crack started forming with some pretty weak cartridges in the last video, so we'll have to see how these big bores, which are going to absolutely test the limits of this system, do. What we have here is 16 inches for the 458 SOCOM and 18 inches for the 4570. Let's go ahead and get some velocities. Now, I'm only going to be getting a two-shot average with each of these cartridges. Number one, because they're pretty expensive to fire, and number two, I'm not going to lie, it's because I want to save my shoulder. Ooh, man, that 300 grain bullet was putting out some recoil. It was averaging 1,796 feet a second, and I'll be really interested to see how many foot-pounds of energy that is. Do you remember a second ago whenever I said that the 458 SOCOM had a decent amount of recoil? Well, uh, not compared to the 4570. And with these numbers, it's pretty easy to tell why. That 300 grain bullet out of the 4570 was going 2319 feet a second, which is over 500 feet a second faster than the 458 SOCOM. You already know the drill. We're going to start with a quarter inch mild steel plate. Oh yeah, that's looking good right there. So with that out of the way, I think it's time to get some testing done. Ooh, man, that is about as close as it gets right there, but it still did not go through that quarter inch mild steel plate. It stopped it cold. Looks like it's just about the biggest dent that I've seen, so it was pretty close. I'm really surprised by that 458 SOCOM, but I think the 4570 has enough extra velocity to go through that quarter inch mild steel plate. But I've been wrong before, so let's go ahead and see. What did I tell you? Straight through, and that's a pretty clean looking hole right there if I've ever seen one. It was about as close as I would want to get to this post right here though. Let's see what it looks like in here. Oh my gosh, I'm not liking the looks of that. Oh, the other side seems to be about the same, but that is pretty worrisome right there. Look at what I found right here. That is a giant hunk of lead, and I think that matches the shape of the 458 SOCOM, but let's go ahead and check it out real quick. Yep, that was it. Unfortunately, the 458 SOCOM just does not have what it takes to get past a quarter inch of mild steel, but the 4570, on the other hand, is moving on up. It's moving right on up to the 3 8 inch mild steel plate. Let's go ahead and paint it real quick. Looking good. If I had to guess, this one's going to crack that other side too, and it may just fall off altogether after this test. That was a nice, solid shot. Let's go ahead and see what happened. Pretty much perfectly centered on the plate, left and right at least, but it still did not go through this 3 8 inch mild steel plate. Let's get it out and see what happened. Oh no. There's no tension at all on there. I think it might have broken something off in the back. Let's go ahead and see. Oh yeah, that is way wider than before. I think it just sheared that whole thing off. The only reason it's staying in there is because of that little lip right there. Anyway, there is a massive bulge on this plate right here. Just about went through. Let's go ahead and get that out of there. There we go. Now that piece is removed and we shouldn't have to worry about it for the rest of the time. So I think I found the bulk of that 4570 bullet right here. Sure looks like it. Let's go ahead and see if it fits. This is a completely different shape than the 458 SOCOM though. Yep, that was it. Okay, now that we figured out the limits of the 4570, we need to go back to the bench and figure out just how deep it penetrated in that 3 8 inch mild steel plate. Because it's time to grind. If I'm being honest, it looks like a freaking asteroid hit this steel plate, but now let's see how deep it actually went.
Okay, so the absolute deepest point that I could find with the 4570 on the 3 8 inch mild steel was 420 thousandths, which is pretty freaking impressive. But wait a second. How does that make any sense? The plate's only 375 thousandths deep. Well, the 4570 is actually putting out so much kinetic energy that it tried to bend the plate into a banana shape. I measured this depth at approximately 95 thousandths. So, if we subtract the 95 thousandths from the original 420 thousandths, we get 315 thousandths, which is still pretty freaking impressive for how big of a diameter this bullet is. But let's talk a little bit more about the difference between the 458 SOCOM and the 4570, because I always hear people say, oh, well, well, the 458 SOCOM is basically a 4570 out of an AR-15. And this may be true with extremely light 4570 loads, but if we start taking a look at higher pressure 4570 loads, it blows the 458 SOCOM out of the water. Now I want to be clear, these higher pressure 4570 loads are not safe to shoot out of every 4570 chambered rifle, so it's important to always verify with the manufacturer of your rifle to see if whatever loads you're going to be shooting are actually rated for and safe to fire out of your rifle. But if a rifle can safely handle these higher pressure loads. Talk about performance benefits. With a 300 grain bullet, I was getting about 500 feet a second faster than the 458 SOCOM. That's basically a magnum compared to the 458 SOCOM, but with all this extra performance comes one major downside. Let me tell you, my shoulder was feeling it. The 4570 was essentially doubling the recoil of the 458 SOCOM, which is already pretty stout itself. So these higher pressure loads probably aren't for everybody. But anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching, and remember, don't let ballistics drive you bananas.